Hi everyone! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Our topic for today is radiation protection. Radiation protection. In the 1930, a consensus was reached on the need for radiation protection devices and procedures. These activities were principally in response to the reported radiation injuries to early radiologists. In the 1950s, scientific publications began to suggest that even the low levels of radiation exposure experienced in diagnostic radiology could be responsible for late radiation responses such as cancer and leukemia in patient. Current radiation protection practices are prompted primarily by concern for late stochastic effects in the patients and radiation worker. Recent use of high-dose fluoroscopy has resulted in an increasing incidence of deterministic effects in patient skin burn. Later on, you will know about the stochastic effects and the deterministic effects. Okay, now is the deterministic effects. These early responses result from high doses of radiations rarely experienced in diagnostic radiology. This is the early responses, the de deterministic effects. This is the early effects of the radiations exposures and the approximate minimum dose necessary to the produce them to produce them. Okay, this is the effect, the death. Anatomic site is the whole body. The minimum dose or the rod is 100 rod. This is the effect. The number two is the hematologic depressions, skin erythema, epilation, chromosomes aberrations, gonadal dysfunctions. Gonadal dysfunctions is the minimum dose is 10 rod. After exposure to high doses of radiation, a number of early responses may appear. A whole body radiation dose is excess of 200 rad or 2 mg can result in death within weeks. Partial body irradiation to any organ or tissue can cause atrophy, screen pain, and dysfunction. In proper metabolism, a whole body radiation dose as low as 25 rad or 250 mg can produce meta measurable hematologic depressions, reductions in the number of circula circulating blood cells, which may require months for recovery. Okay, now is stochastic effects. Principal concern today is for the late effect of radiation exposure. The incidence of the response is dose-related and there is no dose threshold. Stochastic effects is no threshold or this is the late effects. Such effects follow low-dose radiation exposures and may not occur for years. They fall into categories, the genetic effects and the somatic effects. First is the genetic effects of radiation exposure are suspected. They have not been observed in humans. Somatic effects refer to all cells of the body except the genetic cells. The principal somatic effects are cancels and leukemia, which have been observed in humans. However, no individual has ever been identified as a radiation victim after, after low-dose radiation exposure. A low-dose is generally considered to be whole body radiation dose of less than about 25 rad or 250 mg. Such effects are detectable only when observations of thousands and even tens of thousands 
of irradiated individual are made. Leukemia is more readily observed in an irradiated population than cancer because leukemia is relatively rare. Radiation units Radiation units, a special set of units, is used to express the quantity of ionizing radiation. These units, the ruin chant, the rad, and the rem, have been developed and defined over many years and are familiar to radi radiologic workers. However, those in educational programs and in professional practice must become familiar with a second set of radiation units derived from the internal system of units. First, we will discuss the exposures. Exposures, the conventional quant unit is Ruanchen. The SI unit is column per kilogram. Okay, when the X-ray tube is energized, X-ray are emitted in a collimated beam in the same way light is emitted from the flashlight. This useful beam of the X-ray ionizes the air through which it passes. This effect is called exposure. The unit of exposure is the Ruan chain. The SI unit of radiation exposures has no special name. It is simply the column per kilogram. Because of many difficulties encountered with this unit, the radiologic community employs the gray when expressing exposures in the air or the air air karma for for uh, for our purposes we may assume that one true one chain is equals to 10 milligray next is the unit unit of radiation dose Okay, when radiation exposures occurs, the resulting ionization deposit energy in air. If an object such as patient is present at the point of the exposure, energy will be deposit, deposited in the patient. This deposition of the energy by radiation exposure is called radiation absorbed dose or simply absorbed dose and it is measured in rad. Absorb those. So the convention, conventional unit is the red, and the SI unit is the gray. One red is equivalent to depositing 100, 100 ERG of energy in each gram of tissue. The SI unit of observed dose is the gray, and one gray is equal to 100 red or is equal to 1 joule per kilogram. Next is the unit dose equivalent. If the irradiated object is a irradiation worker or the fabric, then the radiation dose results in a radiation dose equivalent. The dose equivalent is measured in REM, the conventional unit. Radiation equivalent man and in, and one rem is equal to 100 ERG per gram. The SI unit of dose equivalent is Siebert. And one Siebert is equal to one joule per kilogram. Note that the rad and the rem, gray and the Siebert, are expressed in similar units. The basic difference between the rem and the other radiation unit is that the REM is used only for radiation protection purposes. It is the unit of the occupational exposure. In diagnostic radiology, one ruined gen can be considered equal to one rad and to one REM. This simplifying assumption is accurate to within about 15% and therefore is sufficiently precise for nearly all considerations of exposure and those in diagnostic radiology. And this one is the activity or the conventional unit is the Curie and the SI unit is Becquerel. We are here in radiation sources and labels. 
Number one is the natural background. Human have inhabited Earth for hundreds of thousands of years and have involved in the presence of a constant radiation exposure called natural background radiation. Natural background radiation comes from three principal sources. Okay, number one is the terrestrial radiation resulting from the naturally occurring radionuclides in the earth number two is the cosmic radiations resulting from principally the sun but also resources outside our solar system and galaxy and the number three is the internal exposures from radionuclides naturally deposits in the human body principally potassium negative 40 or 4 degree potassium in the United States, these sources produce a whole body dose of 50 to 300 millirad per year or 0 0.5 to 3 milligrade per year, depending on the locations and diet. Number two is the medical radiation exposure. Patients receive radiation exposures from radiographic examinations, fluoroscopic examinations, radioisotope studies, and radiation oncology procedures. By far, the largest amount of man-made radiation exposures is received from medical X-ray examinations. Approximately 65% of the U.S. population exposed to the such radiation each year. The radiation dose average over the entire population is approximately 55 millirem per year or 0.55 millisievert per year. Number three in the industrial research and co consumer application. Industrial application of ionizing radiations cover a wide range of activity, including the mining, refining, and fabrication of the nuclear fuel, industrial radiography, and the handling of radioisotope of large number of industrial applications. Many cost consumer products incorporate X-ray devices or radioactive material. Airport surveillance systems produce X-rays. Radioactive materials in incorporate into various luminance products such as instruments, gauge clocks, and exit signs. Radioactive material is also incorporated into such devices as check source, static, eliminator, and smoke detectors. Collectively, these man-made sources contribute approximately 50, 15 millirem per year or 150 microsievert per year to the population dose. Now we are here in the patient dose. The dose received by the patients during diagnostic radiologic examinations is usually expressed in one of the three ways. Number one is the entrance skin exposures. Number two is the organ dose. Number two is the fetal dose. Each has specific applications in assessing the risk to the patient. But uh, skin ex entrance skin exposure is the easiest to estimate. Entrance skin exposure. The entrance skin exposures of the patient during any radiographic examinations can be measured by directly or estimated by using techniques previously described. Uh, estimated skin uh, exposures during fluoroscopy usually must be measured, although it too can be estimated from tabletop exposures. Measurement to a technique under investigations. So this is the range of acceptable entrance skin exposures for selected radiographic examinations. Okay, this is the uh, one example is the chest PA, 10 to 25 milliruen chen. And then the skull abdomen, retrograde, pelogram, cervical spine, thoracic spine, extremity, 
dental or bite wing peri apical is 230 to 425 milliruen gen. Okay, next is the organ dose. Sometimes the radiation dose received by the specific organ tissue is significant, of course. Organ dose usually cannot be measured directly but must be estimated. Another organ or particular concern is the bone marrow. Bone marrow uh, dose is used to estimate the population's mean marrow dose as an index of the somatic effect of radiation exposures. This is represent, representative bone marrow dose for selective radiographic examinations. This is, number one is the skull, 10 millirad, cervical spine, chest, stomach, and upper gastrointestinal tract, gallbladder, lumbar spine, intravenous urography, abdomen, pelvis, and extremity, which is 2 millirad. And number three is the fetal dose. Like most organ dose, fetal dose cannot be measured. It must be estimated. This estimate is usually obtained from phantom measurement or computer-generated calculation. The fetal dose is given in millirad per ruwen chan. Okay, this is the approximate fetal dose as function of the entrance, entrance skin exposures, the skull, which is less than 0.01 millirad per ruin chant, cervical spine, pull mount dental, chest, stomach, and upper gastrointestinal tract, gallbladder, lumbar spine, intravenous urography, abdomen, pelvis, and extremity, uh, less than 0.01 milliruin chant, uh, millirad per ruin chant, sorry. So, we are here in the Administrative Procedures Patient's Dose. Patient selections and examination selections are two areas in which radio radiologic technologies can contribute to reducing unnecessary patient dose. So, number one is the pregnancy. Safeguard against accidental fetal irradiations are irradiations are particularly critical during the first two months or three months of pregnancy. In those early weeks, a pregnancy may not be suspected and the fetus could be exposed unknowingly. So, the radiographer should never only conduct radiologic examinations on a pregnant patient unless a document decision has been made to do so, or the most important is the patient consent. When such as is the examinations do proceed, all of the previously discussed technique for minimizing patient dose should be employed. Radiographer fulfill their responsibility to the potentially pregnant patients by posting caution sign in the waiting room and in each exam examining, examining room, such as sign warning patients about the importance of informing the radiographer or radiologist that pregnancy is possibility. So number two is the patient and the examination selection. Precautions against unnecessary patients' radiation exposures are generally responsibility of the radiologist, not the radiographer. Selection of the patients without symptoms for an X-ray examinations involved mass screening with selected routine procedures, many of which may not be medically justified. Routine X-ray examinations should not be performed when there is no precise medical indications. Patients selected for X-ray examination fall into categories, those who have symptoms and those who do not. 
Patients with symptoms require x-ray examinations to provide physicians with information to plan the patient's future clinical management. Patients without symptoms usually are prepared for x-ray examinations to provide baseline information for possible future problem or to satisfying certain legal, insurance, or employment requirements. Screening mammography is such example. Okay, also we have example of such an acceptable screening programs follow. Number one is the mass screening has not been found effective. Better methods of tubercle tuberculosis testing are now available. Also, hospital admissions, chest x-ray examinations for routine hospital admission should not be performed on patients with no clinical indications for chest disease. Number three is the pre-employment physical. Chest and lower back x-ray examination nations are not justified because little, little knowledge is gained about previous injury or disease. Number four is the periodic health examinations. Many physicians debate the frequency of general physical examinations as a presentive medicines protocol. Certainly, the physical evaluation of asymptomatic patients should not include x-ray examination and especially fluoroscopy. Number five is the whole body CT. This examination is currently promoted by some as general health head-to-toe screening tool. It should not be done. The radiation dose is too high and the disease detection rate too low. Now we are here in the administrative procedures of the radiographers okay perhaps the single most important aspect of radiation control program in diagnostic radiology is a properly designed a occupational radiation monitoring program okay we have number one is the Okay, this is the occupational radiation. For a uh, type of radiation measures devices are used as occupational radiation monitoring is the packet ionization chambers, film badges, thermoluminescence dosimetry badges, and op optically stimulated luminescence badges. So number one is the packet ionization chambers can be used for the occupational radiation monitoring although they seldom are used in diagnostic radiology the advantage of to these devices is that they can evaluate it daily photographic film in the form of the film badge has been uh, princip principal principal occupational radiation money for for the years the design for the film badge has undergone many refinements such as metal filter that enable is to measure not only quantity of radiation but also the type of radiation approximately energy and direction okay number three is the thermoluminescence dosimetry badges this is the similar badges we use daily as occupational radiation monitors and have many of the same performance characteristic as a film badges. The sensitive material of the TLD is reusable and can be used for the length of time exceeding the month interval length limits places on the film badges. And the last is the optically stimulated luminescence badges are the newest additions to occup occupational radiation radiations monitors. They are sensitive, frequent, and can be worn period up to one year. And number two is the pregnant radiographers. 
Okay, uh, under normal circumstances, a radiographer, radiographer receives less than 5 millisievert or 500 millirem annually, as recorded by the Occupational Radiations Monitor. The exposures under the protective apron should not exceed 0 0.5 millisievert or 50 millirem annually and the resulting fetal dose should not exceed 0 0.25 millisievert or 25 millirem because the dose limitations to the fetus is 5 millisievert for the gestation period. Under most circumstances, additional or special radiation protective measures are not necessary. A special administrative procedure Procedures are required for pregnant radiographer. It is the responsibility of each female radiographer to inform her supervisor when he discovers or suspects that she is pregnant. These situations then become declared pregnancy and neural state effect. The supervisor should then consult with the pregnant radiographers and review completely the on-site radiation control program. To comply with current NCRP recommendations, management must deliberately review in each radiation monitor's report to ensure the occupational fetal dose does not exceed 0 0.5 millisievert in, millisievert in any month. The color positions monitor can be used to estimate fetal dose by modifying the reported result by 0 0.1. Better yet, a second monitor monitor may be positioned at waist level under protective apron. When a second monitor is provided, the two monitor must cons consistently be worn at the assigned position. To avoid confusions, the second monitor should be labeled baby badge or petal monitor with the label colored a baby blue or yellow belly. Or yellow belly. Every radiographer should be familiar with the cardinal principle of radiation protection, the time, the distance, and the shielding with Alara, or as low as reasonably achievable. Number one, the time of exposure to radiation source should be kept to a minimum. Number two, the distance between the radiation source and the radiographer should be as great as possible. Number three, when, appro when appropriate and practi practicable protective shielding should be positioned between the radiation source and the radiographer. And number four, maintain radiation exposure as low as, uh, as, low as reasonably achievable. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you gained some knowledge in this video. Hope you like it. Please like and subscribe for more updates and topics. Thank you for watching.